I bet you understand that you need to eat more protein or that you need to watch your calories or that you need to exercise more. And my question to you is, has knowing that stuff made a difference? You might say yes, or you might think about that a little bit more and realize it hasn't made a difference. All right, I'll just put it to you straight. This video is gonna be difficult to listen to. There's really no other way to put it. When we're trying to lose weight, one of the things we often will gravitate towards is what we need to physically do with our fitness, with our nutrition, maybe even with our sleep in some other areas. And while this is not a terrible place to start, and these things are very important, the thing that I would argue is most of your hangup is the emotional and the mental side of things. I bet you understand that you need to eat more protein or that you need to watch your calories or that you need to exercise more. And my question to you is, has knowing that stuff made a difference? You might say yes, or you might think about that a little bit more and realize it hasn't made a difference. And if that's you, your problem isn't necessarily with food or with exercise. It's the emotional reasons keeping you from engaging in those healthy habits. A great example of this is being afraid to let go of food as an emotional crutch. You might be somebody who uses food to temporarily handle pain that you don't know how to deal with. And while I'm no therapist or psychologist, I have experienced these things as well. Many, many, many times in my life, as soon as I would feel stressed out, I would turn to food because I didn't know how to handle these emotions. And while I'm still somebody who's working on these things and I'm by no means a guru, one of the most important breakouts that I've made in my life is understanding that my emotions drive every decision that I make. It doesn't matter if it's a negative emotion or a positive emotion. 90% of the decisions that I make and that you make are based on an emotional reaction or response. So if you're not ready to address some of these emotional hangups or the ways that you handle your emotions, more particularly the ones that affect things like your eating behavior, then you're gonna have a very difficult time losing weight and keeping it off. Have you ever heard one of those stories where somebody loses weight and gains it all back? You might even be one of those people. Well, if somebody knew exactly how to lose weight, actually proved that they knew what they were doing by doing it and losing the weight, why would they gain it back? Well, the very clear cut answer, at least to me, is, is that they didn't also work on their emotional and their mental hangups. They didn't do mental or emotional exercises along with the physical exercises through actual physical activity or through their nutrition. There is nobody that would question that more vegetables mean healthier living because vegetables are healthy foods, but it's not the logical explanation as to why vegetables are healthy foods. It's dealing with the emotional underpinnings of what keeps somebody going back to those foods that actually make them feel good, where they're eating purely for pleasure. Now, I'm certainly not somebody who thinks you should never eat for pleasure. I think that's insane. But I also believe that there are many of us who eat foods to heal temporarily emotional pain. And if you can't figure out a way to reduce that occurrence, it's gonna be very difficult to manage your calorie intake. Because if you're eating every single time you have a negative emotion, you're letting the food and the emotion be the master of you, instead of you being the master of the emotion. I'm certainly not trying to paint a picture that this is easy. I'm trying to express that it's also important to understand that your emotional relationship with your body, with your weight, with food, is equally, if not more important, than the physical habits of eating healthier foods more often, exercising more often, sleeping better, and going to bed actually on time, instead of spending time on Netflix or TikTok. So I created this video not to try to undermine the healthy habits that you are engaging in from a physical standpoint, but rather to encourage you to be brave in your exploration of your mental and emotional health. As always, if you would like help with this, if you're in a position to get a coach to help you get through some of these struggles, I would like you to know that I am currently accepting applications and I would love to work with you. If you're interested in that, you can go to the link in my bio, which will take you to my application process and ask you a series of questions to see if you would be a good fit for coaching. As always, thank you a ton for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, no matter how hard it might have been to listen to, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to share your own story 
in regards to this topic, please let me know in the comments. I love hearing people's stories. If you've been enjoying my videos and you're not yet a subscriber, I would highly recommend that you subscribe to my channel so you can get notified whenever I put new videos out. Lastly, I'd like to thank you for watching this video. I know it probably wasn't easy to have to think about your emotional state and your mental state as you are on the journey of creating impactful and lifelong changes. I wish you the best for the rest of your day, and until we talk again, take care.